You're watching The Whitney Reynolds Show. Next up, we have John Register, a TED Talk speaker, Paralympic silver medalist, and expert on today's topic. He's here to explain how his lineage has taught him to overcome adversity, and it's something we must pass on to the next generation. Welcome to the show. Whitney, thanks for having me. You know, today's topic has been one that we've covered different sides of mm. it. And really, I have you on right now because I want to talk about the history mm. that you not only learned as a kid, but you want to make sure is enforced going forward. Right. So I grew up in Oak Park on the west side of Chicago. And, you know, as a kid, you just grew up with other kids around the block. But there's sometimes there's a change that happens that shifts your identity or shifts what you perceive about yourself or others are perceiving about yourself. And for me, uh, I had just finished up, I think, in um, uh, at the at the Ridgeland Common swimming pool. I was a lifeguard, pool guard, whatever. And, and I was saving my money up that um, during that summer to buy a Schwinn bicycle, black oh. Schwinn gold, black and gold. It was awesome. Yeah. It's going to be on Harlem Avenue. And I was just <laughs> about to pick it up and I went down to pick it up. Uh, after I earned my money, the guy sold it to me and I was driving, uh, riding it back home and I crossed over Ridgeland Avenue, going back to my house right there on, the, on South Ridgeland and woo, the cop car stopped me. Mm. Uh, and a police officer gets out and really kind of cost me about, you know, that's not your bike. Where'd you get it from? Who'd you get it? Where'd you steal it from? You know, what you need to bring, get that back to the, uh, to the rightful owner. And you think about it. I've just worked all summer long to earn money to buy something and to have somebody tell me it's not mine uh, was just uh, devastating. A neighbor from across the street saw the whole incident coming, you know, unfolding and knew that I had, you know, worked all summer long for this bicycle and actually went in on the police officer saying that, <laughs> that kid alone, he's been working all summer for that bike on Risen Commons and, and, uh, and he's just, this is the first day he's got, got to ride the bike and, you know, this is the experience that you had. So right at that one moment in time, I knew something had been changed. Something was, was a bit different. When you felt that, was mm -hmm. that kind of that moment when you then started talking more to your parents about your family's past? No, not, not at that point. There was another incident that really shook me and solidified that moment. And I was with one of my white friends, Michael Ryan, who uh, we were looking for some Father's Day cards down in the basement of the, of the store. Didn't see anything. He went across the street. I kept on looking. When I went up the escalators to walk out the door, I was accosted by another police officer, thrown against the front window of the store, frisked all the way up and down. And he whispered in my ear, you know, when I find something on you, you know where you're going. When I find something on you, you know, you know where you're going. And I had no idea what he's talking about. Two, I'm thinking about he's going to put something on me. Right. I have nothing in my pocket. I'm going right. to be my friend. And I was traumatized by that. Mike and I go back to my, my father's house uh, back on Ridgeland. And he comes oh, back home and he begins to walk me through this process of what happened. Oh, tell me that again. Mm. One more time. I just want to make sure I have it all right. So he's getting me ready for this um, this confrontation that he's putting together with the store owner. And so in front of my accuser that was there, we wound up have, being able to have the conversation. I said it for a third, fourth, fifth time, whatever, when the gentleman was actually in the room and I was more calm to say it. Because first I was froggy. I wanted, you know, right. I wanted to just fight, right? But, you, right? but my father taught me how to fight with your words. Mm -hmm. And so we got a letter that this gentleman was um, fired from his, his, his job. So later on, I'm thinking, okay, what did that do to him? Did he have a family? Did he have, you know, children? Did, who was, was he supporting some age, aging loved ones? You know, why was he in that mode for that? But it also opened up what my father had fought for back in 63, civil rights, voting rights, uh, down in jail in Hattiesburg, Mississippi, uh, and with nine other white ministers. Uh, he's a Presbyterian minister. Uh, and and he has his badge of, of honor, courage, and, and you know the things we have right now that make it possible to elect a, a Barack Obama. You know yeah. that they fought for back then as those young men and women. Uh, yeah, so that's that's what opened up that window for me. So taking it back to your dad, because what you just said about him was is so extremely powerful, and I feel like these stories need to be told. Mm. You said he marched. Tell me about what he did. Yeah, so you know the whole family was really very uh, in the civil rights movement. They were the ones who were marching wow. for the, the rights of, of others, you know, and things that he might not ever see in his lifetime. But he's paving the way for for those individuals. That's what's interesting is like 
even being so beyond the moment of now. Mm -hmm. And I feel like in the times we live in, we sometimes are an instant world Absolutely. that you don't think about, you know, the future generations. And so how are you teaching now your family about what your dad taught you? Well, modeling is everything. And so I was very fortunate to have somebody to model behaviors for me, right? So my dad was able to model for me exactly what I can now model with my children. So I know there's some, some things that are harsh in our, in our world that they're going to have to face. No matter what the television or the political structure is going to say, there's some very physical things that you have to know in order to, to survive in, in, this, in, in this America. And one of them, you know, I told my son, he was about to take his car down to Texas to go to school. I said, you need to have your insurance card ready available in plain view as you, as you cross over into Texas. You also need to have um, uh, your registration, make sure everything's going on. So I took a police officer, walked the entire car with him before he left Colorado, where we live now, and to go down. And I said, you're going to get stopped. So just know that. And so you just need to be respectful, hands at 10 and two, just say yes or no, sir. Don't give him a reason to, to reach for a gun like you have a weapon. And so not 10 minutes in, he calls me across the line and says, dad, I just got stopped. I said, you remember what we just talked about? This is what you do. Now, we take a pause there, right? Because we prepared, but now after the fact, we have to leave legacy. We have to mm -hmm. begin to open up a dialogue and have conversation, right. or else it just begins to be this tit for tat and going back and forth. Oh, that's not really happening with the police. Oh, this, it is happening with the police. And that, and that, you got right. this, this rift and this fight. And so how do we then have that conversation to actually go further and go deeper? And, and my belief is that you just have to put it out there to help people to understand where you're coming from in your most authentic voice possible. Oh, that's uh, and good. It's, it's just moving on with facts. And I know it's tough with facts, you know, with these days, but facts are facts and we have to uncover all of them. And I believe if you can't argue both sides of the issue, you're not uh, authorized to talk on the issue. So say that again, because I find that mm -hmm. extremely powerful. If you are not able to, to argue both sides of an issue, you have no right to talk about that issue. Because until you understand where possibly where the other person's been. Absolutely. Yeah. And that goes back to the mindset of what my father was trying to teach me to make sure they understood that this man had a family. That even though he did something violation and, and wrong, there's an outcome that he is getting that's probably going to have an impact on his life. And so how can we not have the, the detriment to happen to both people? Right. And how can we actually you know, really come together? That is so powerful. Well, thank you so much for coming on and sharing your story. Absolutely. For more information on today's show, visit WhitneyReynolds.com.